Okay, here we are at topic 4.7, and this is the really the social side of the changes that take place. We just did political challenges. This is the, the social challenges that come to the hierarchies um, of this time period, 1450 to 1750. Okay, so I'm going to go kind of empire by empire. Um, the Ottoman society, you have this group called the ulama. Um, and this is an old Islamic term, but it becomes the mean during the time of the Ottomans, really the religious scholars. Um, and they're kind of the more conservative movement. We'll see them come to the forefront. We'll begin into period six uh, with the reactions to imperialism. Um, how the Ottomans administered control and, and gained legitimacy. Um, they did it in several ways. Um, they combined the office of the Sultan or emperor um, with that of the Caliphate, which is the kind of the religious leadership. Um, gaining religious leadership for their rule. Um, they established the Devsherm system, um, the gathering of Christians to Islam by force. We talked about that in period two, um, or I'm sorry, in period three. Um, religious toleration was practiced uh, to an extent in the Ottoman society, and women actually have more rights. Uh, and we're going to get into each of these pieces bit by bit here as we go forward. Okay, so religious minorities in the Ottoman Empire were tolerated but have very limited power. Um, they are subject to the Devsherma system, um, where that's that system that <coughs> took one Christian male from each family and um, turned him into an Ottoman bureaucrat and so, uh, so or soldier, usually uh, inquired the con conversion to Christianity. Um, if you chose to remain um, loyal to your traditional religion, then you had to pay a tax called the jizya, um, which was a tax paid to practice your faith. Okay, um, women in the Ottoman Empire actually had a lot of rights um, because they had a long history of pastoral times in the in the pastoral nomadic times. Um, it's more egalitarian. There is a lot more equality. Women retained some of that power. Uh, they they retained the power property rights. They can inherit and own property on their own. Some of these women become very wealthy um, and they have legal rights in divorce cases and marriage and inheritance. Okay. Um, the class system in Ottoman Empire is called the millet system. There are four social classes um, in there. You also have the religious classes uh, based on um, who you are. Um, there's more of a religious uh, millet, but the millets basically was the uh, the four parts of society with the scholars and, and government people, the soldiers, the craftsmen, and uh, the agricultural worker. And then you had the devshima, um, which created social mobility for non-Muslims. By being taken into that system, um, you could move up the Ottoman social ladder. Okay, um, in the Mughal Empire. Um, religious toleration um, is the key to everything. Early on, when the the, uh, the Mughals expand their territory and that they're most powerful, uh, beginning under Akbar the Great, toleration was practiced. We've talked about this in period three. Um, and the Hindus have many rights. That begins to change later, especially under Aurangzeb, who is the last of the great Mughal sultans. Um, toleration pretty much goes away and eventually leading to Hindu revolts, most notably the Maratha rebellion that we talked about in the last video. Um, and that seeks to weigh, weaken um, the Mughal Empire to the point where the, they're easy prey for the British. Okay, Qing Dynasty. You have to remember Qing design, Dynasty is a Manchurian dynasty. They are not ethnically Chinese. Uh, they owe violently overthrow through invasion the Ming Dynasty. Uh, they are helped along in the, or eased along in this by uh, famine and peasant rebellions that are going on in the Ming Dynasty. Uh, one of the things that they put in is that they try to originally re remain separate from the Chinese. Uh, by forbidding intermarriage between Chinese and Manchu. Uh, but they also adopt a lot of Chinese customs. And they're the ones, as we talked about in period three, conquering um, Central Asia, the, the Central Asian parts of what is modern day China. Okay. In Europe, um, religion is really the backbone of society. It's a hierarchical society. Um, if you remember your feudal pyramids there with the king on top, then the nobility. Gradually, you have the middle class and businesses and artisans moving into the kind of the next layer, and then peasants and serfs. Um, Louis the Fourteenth um, is an absolutist, so France and really uh, Spain and a lot of the great Catholic monarchies are very absolutist. Um, 
in this time frame, but it continues elsewhere. Uh, but Louis rules by divine right. He has all the power in his hands, and he gradually, over time, consolidates more and more uh, through a different lot of things. Um, Spain is a slightly different kettle of fish because the Span Spain, if you remember, had been ruled as part of the Islamic Caliphates for a long period of time, roughly 700 years. By 1492, under Ferdinand and Isabella, who you remember from your Columbus, um, they expel the Spanish, uh, the Mo Muslims in the Reconquista, which I talked about in one of the earlier videos. Um, and in the aftermath of that, they over expel over 200,000 Jews from Spain who refuse to convert to Christianity. The same thing happens to Muslims. Um, it leads to a rising of anti-Semitism in the places where the Jews go to outside of the Ottoman Empire. Um, and it further spreads the Jewish diaspora throughout Europe, especially into Eastern Europe, which, which will become problematic in the late 19th and early 20th century for the Jews um, during that time period. Okay, um, some effects of the Enlightenment on the Jews. And we haven't gotten into Enlightenment a lot in this period. We'll do more of that in period five. But if you remember from the year, this was really the, um, the idea of implying scientific reasoning to um, um, politics. Uh, the Jews were often seen as a repository of blind religious obedience and unthinking observance. Uh, so they were kind of stereotyped um, in Christian Europe, but a lot of the more enlightened scholars saw this as really an effect of Christianity, not and something that was forced on the Jews, not something um, that they voluntarily allowed to happen. Um, many of these thinkers sought to remove these devices that separated the Jews from the rest of the society, um, and Jews became kind of very much power players in a lot of the Republican movements that were taking place during this time frame to kind of undo the old order. All right. Um, Russia has a whole nother set system going in place. It's an absolute monarchy. Also, you have serfdom there. The Orthodox Church plays a big role in there, different than the role of the Catholic Church and with the Reformation, the, the weakening of the Catholic Church. You have to remember that Russia in its, is mostly an agricultural society, so you have really much an agricultural social class uh, system there. All right. Um, Spanish America, the Costa system that we spent some time talking about with the paintings and things like that, divided people based on race. Um, and you have a pyramid here with that and also in your in your book, um, uh, in your packet. Uh, pure blood Spanish were on the top, Native American and black slaves in the middle and various um, differentiations of the combinations um, below um, that. OK. Um, so that's it for period 4.7, our topic 4.7. I'll be back um, with 4.8, the wrap-up next.